The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Oosterhuis here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Canola School episode, and I have here with me Raymond Gadwa, who is with the WCCRRC. Can you, how, how is it going today, I guess? Um, it's, it's, it's going, uh, it's going, it's going fine. Uh, yeah, we've just com- recently completed, uh, uh, our, our meetings, the, uh, uh, res- with respect to, uh, this year's trials and also with respect to the, uh, black, uh, disease uh, situation uh, as they pertain to our trials and, uh, in a broader sense too, to Western Canada. So those, those, tri- those, uh, meetings just concluded, uh, uh, uh a week ago. So uh, things went well. So can you tell me a bit about what WCCRRC is? Uh, WCCRC stands for the Western Canada Canola Rapeseed Recommending Committee. This committee is tasked with uh, setting the framework for canola variety recommendation for Western Canada, uh, and, and so their 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 job is to to provide uh, guidance and oversight uh, to to the program uh, that that uh, I administer on behalf of the Canola Council. Uh, that I administer on behalf of WCCRC. I'm a Canola Council employee. So they, as I said, they provide uh, the framework and guidelines and, and rules uh, by which we uh, implement the uh, testing system for Western Canada. Okay, so what sorts of things did you guys find in the trials this year? What sort of recommendations are you making for 2021? Um, the recommendation process is, is on is ongoing. Basically, the testing system is comprised of uh, two years of testing. So the first year of testing is is conducted uh, by the individual variety developers. And uh, so typically, in a typical year, for instance, this year, we had uh, 1,375 uh, what we call private co-op trials. That's the first year of testing at 182 locations across Western Canada. Uh, Predominantly in Saskatchewan, 641 in Saskatchewan, 391 in Manitoba, uh, 341 in Alberta, and two in British Columbia. And then the next, uh, then after, then the, uh, the what we call the public co-op testing, uh, that would have taken the data from last year's trials which were conducted and uh, uh, then the selections from those trials by the individual companies are given to the WCCRC for testing and more in, in a in a re- second year recommendation trial so these are basically a subset of the first year of testing the selections from those so the, those were 111 research trials at 32 locations across western Canada and then that data is is assembled uh, assembled and uh, and uh, allocated into uh, databases, and um, um, the the data is used to evaluate the cultivars for recommendation. So there's a prescribed set of rules and guidelines uh, that the uh, that the candidate canola cultivars have to to make and it's derived from the, those two years of testing uh, and predominantly the the focus is on 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 quality uh, that's the that's what makes canola the the quality parameters uh, so basically the committee has has guidelines for fatty acid fatty acid content oil protein and glucosinolates uh, in in the meal um, but at the same time, uh, agronomic data is collected, uh, so we have information, of course, on yield, lodging, days to first flower, and days days to maturity. Uh, so we have a good sense of what's coming through the system, whether the material is is late or early, or uh, typically in the middle of that. Uh, and at the same time, on behalf, we conduct. Uh, uh, 40 uh, black lake disease reaction trials across Western Canada, and so that would be 10, 10 locations, and uh, that gives us a good sense of uh, what's happening with black lake. It also gives us a good sense uh, 
of what the uh, Black Lake races are out there. Uh, and um, I don't can't tell you off the top of my head what they were at each individual site, but we have a pathology subcommittee that looks at that very thoroughly and uh, is able to to determine uh, the nature of black leg infection as they pertain to those those black leg disease reaction trials. And sometimes they can um, make inferences about uh, the, the type of disease uh, disease uh, that's out there in the in the broader uh, canola production areas. So, were there any surprises you found this year on uh, any of the trials? Um. No, is uh, not not particularly. Um, it was uh, it was what we call um, a fair to middling average year in terms of, of trials. So we we did have a typical year. We will have losses due to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to hail um, and uh, and then poor. Um, we we've had a no- number of low. Uh, we did have some issues um, sort of in the, the Camrose uh, area. It was uh, very wet for a protracted period of time, uh, followed by uh, very challenging uh, harvest conditions, i.e. wind. Uh, so uh, so these, thing, these, these things happen. Um, it, overall, it was, a, it, it, was a, it was a good year. I mean, we do... We, our testing is fairly spread out, so our trials in uh, in British Columbia um, were were challenged on a number of uh, uh, of areas uh, th- this year. Um, so, but overall, it was um, uh, a good year. Not a great year, but a good year. <laughs> What's the typical time frame um, on a lot of these trials? Like, are you looking at multi year trials or what sort of? Uh, the typical time frame is is two years. That would be the maximum time frame. So, uh, so when a candidate cultivar is recommended, it's typically based on on two years, two years of data. So the first year is private tests that conducted solely, uh, uh, solely by the, uh, the canola developers, and then the second year is 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 uh, overseen by by myself on behalf of the of the committee and those trials are are uh, contracted out to a variety of organizations uh, across western canada so this it's more of an independent component uh uh in the in the sec in the sec second year uh out of the uh, out of the hands of the developers and, and uh, into the hands of the WCCRC for a direct review uh, of the of the outcomes and those two two years of data are combined together to make uh, to make uh, recommendations so uh, but we do have we do have um, a mechanism for recommendation after one year so they can take data from their first year of testing and and use that to present to the committee um, as such that they get interim recommendation and that is premised on the fact that they would then uh, then put it into the second year of testing and uh, we were able uh, the committee was able the industry uh, was able to, to for instance some of the very early club root resistant cultivars went through that interim testing system whereby whereby they had to get to market quickly uh, and they wanted some assurance that that recommendation would be there. So they they knew after one year that they could move forward. And some of the new so some of the new particularly de- disease traits um, uh, would exercise that option of getting interim recommendation after uh, one year, and then it allows for fast tracking uh, traits uh, into the marketplace. So what percentage of um, varieties out there go through this trial process? Do all of them go through uh, this program? Uh, any variety that is sold in Western Canada, so 100%, uh, uh, goes through this testing pro- program. Awesome. Um, is there anything else you would like to add about what you found this year or what sorts of things you guys are going to be looking at going into the 2021 season? Um, no, I, I could just, you know, just to highlight that, uh, 
what we'll be looking at at our recommendation meetings in February of this year that we'll be looking at potentially 75 new cultivars for a recommendation and some of those might may not make the grade we haven't looked at all, all the data coming in and analysis is ongoing and um, and just to note that we have 75 coming forward and those would fall under the Clearfield Liberty uh, Liberty True Flex uh, Roundup um, True Flex and uh, Optimum Gly. Uh, and Optimum Gly, uh, we're still awaiting for approval in, in major markets. With the, uh, so those are conducted separately. And uh, of those 75, uh, seven would, would be of the uh, low linolenic uh, uh, variety types. So those are more of the high stability uh, type. Uh, types that will be coming through. So that's just an overview of what we expect to to see um, to see this uh, this February. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, no problem. Thanks.